Hey, welcome to Two Guys Garage. Now, as you can see, I'm out of the shop and I'm on a mission. I'm here to show you one of the coolest, the newest, most innovative and high-tech manufacturing facilities in the world. But you know what? We're right here in the USA making cool stuff. So stick around. We're gonna show you everything from thermal forming, injection molding, CNC machining. It's gonna be cool. All right, guys, we're just outside of Chicago. A nice chilly day. We're at WeatherTech. We're about to go inside and get the full behind the scenes tour. So let's get warmed up and go check it out. All right, this is way better. Now we're in the storefront. This is the product location you know, here at WeatherTech. And you guys are familiar with them. You probably have some of their product in your vehicle. Now it's all about these floor liners, whether for the front area, the back area, maybe even the cargo area of your vehicle. You've also seen their side air deflectors. They've got things like bed liners. I mean, they're growing and booming, and what's cool is it's right here in America. Now, David McNeil, he's a big motorsports fan, so it's gonna be really cool to kind of pick his brain. And I can see in the background, we've got some pretty sweet rides. So instead of shopping, let's go check out some eye candy. I'm loving this one. 2007 GT500, not only that, 40th anniversary Shelby edition. You can see the custom wheels, the big brake setup. And if you look up here, no top, just the way I like it. Open road driving convertible. This thing is pretty sweet. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. David McNeil with WeatherTech. Appreciate you having us here today. Welcome, welcome to the WeatherTech showroom in Bolingbrook, Illinois. In fact, this Shelby, I had a great, uh, I've got some great memories of because I drove it from Telluride to Las Vegas to Shelby to get the 40th anniversary package done and the Super Snake motor. So it was a wonderful drive. Oh, I bet. Nothing like an open top car making that kind of power. If it wasn't so cold outside, I'd ask you to take me for a ride, but, but I understand. We can go for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of rides, I see some pretty hot bikes over there. You mind checking them out? Let's take a peek. This is a 1982 Ducati 900 Super Sport. It's got 5,024 original miles on it. This one's a 77 MV Agusta 750S America with 64 original kilometers. This one came out of a museum in, in uh, Germany. Uh, it wouldn't be like Nürburgring type area. Yeah, Nürburgring uh, Museum, there you go. Nice, <laughs> now this, a Vincent. This is a beautiful bike here. This is a 1952 Vincent Black Shadow. It was owned by a very famous motorcycle racer that won a lot of races and it's fully restored. Nice. Now, you ever take these ones out? Uh, I, occasionally. Occasionally, I've ridden the Vincent. It's uh, an amazing uh, motorcycle. Uh, very different from anything else you might ride. Uh, very mechanical. Oh, I can tell just looking at sort of the adjusters here. I assume for the drum brakes, like there's a lot of cool little widgets, but done really it's tastefully. It's the most adjustable motorcycle that I know of. Therefore, it's the most misadjusted motorcycle you could possibly have. <laughs> That's usually how it works. Don't let us, the consumer, really have any of the controls we don't need. <laughs> well, very cool, man. There's some other goodies in here, but you know, we promised the guys that we're gonna show them how to do things, how to make things right here in America. And you've got a great story. So I'm thinking that maybe we start that tour that we were talking about. Let's start the tour. This is our injection molding department, and a few things that it takes to run a company is a lot of electricity to run these injection molding machines. So this particular building has three megawatts of power coming in. Only it. three? Only Mega. three. Mega? Now, a, a um, normal nuclear power plant puts out about 2,000, so we're consuming three of it. The other part is, is chilling. We have a closed loop chilling system, so we're not consuming fresh water. Wow. So this is one of our 1,000 ton injection molding machines. And this is a set of floor mats, and that's what we make by injection molding. So you have the driver's mat, the passenger mat, and when you injection mold a, a, a plastic product, the plastic is coming through and being injected somewhere on the part. You can almost find it on any plastic part. Injection molding is like a waffle maker. You open the waffle maker up in your kitchen. I like waffles. You pour the batter in, close it, cook it, open it up a minute later, you've got waffles. Injection molding is you close the top and bottom, 
initially with no batter in there and then you shoot the plastic in through a very small hole at very high pressure, sometimes up to 40,000 PSI. So this is the core, this is the bottom of a set of floor mats, and this is the cavity which is the top of the floor mat. And the plastic is injected through this point right here and it spreads into both cavities with the tool closed. Wait 30 seconds or so, open it up, and this machine will make somewhere around 200 sets of floor mats an hour. Wow. Now there must be a ton of pressure to hold these two tools no, together no, with all of... No, not a ton of pressure. A thousand tons of pressure, which is two million pounds of pressure. So I'm standing in here and I can absolutely tell you that the hydraulic system is off before I climbed in here. Because otherwise we'd have a David Waffle. Which... You'd have a David floor mat. Yeah. <laughs> You can also feel how cold these tools are because when that hot plastic is injected at a few hundred degrees, it needs to cool quickly. And all these tools are water cooled. You want to show maybe some of the other end of this? Like how does the plastic get to this point? Absolutely. Awesome. So this is one of our smaller injection molding machines. It's only 500 tons, so there's only a million pounds pressure between yeah. the plate. Only. Only a million pounds. And so where the plastic starts, its journey is up through these plastic hoses, goes down through the hopper, into the heated barrel, and the barrel has all these bands on it that heat it, and then it gets compressed and heated more by this screw, and then the plastic actually flows around the screw, through these channels, through these holes, and into the injection mold to make the part. You know, like you can see the heat build up on those bands, which is kind of cool. You know some really hot things are going on. And then this is a little intricacies of that screw to be able to drive that plastic. And I assume there's some shearing going on as it's driving its well, way Well, there's shearing and heating and compressing of it, which also creates heat, along with the electric band. Gets the plastic up to a very specific temperature for quality control. And then it's injected under high pressure into the machine. It's like a very mini, high-tech, really slow-turning turbocharger. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> cool. Let's go check out some more stuff. Don't go anywhere. We've got more of the high-tech roller coaster right here at WeatherTech. So stick around. This segment is brought to you by ARP Bolts, the world leader in fastener technology. Hey, welcome back. Now I'm at Weather Tech with David McNeil, looking at some of the most high-tech manufacturing processes and equipment in the country. Why don't you walk us through what's happening here? There's a lot of whizzing and buzzing and things going on. This is a very specialized injection molding machine, and it has two injection units. The vast majority of injection molding machines only have one, so it's got one injection unit there and one up top. And what's going on is the first injection unit does the polyethylene base or core of one of our tech floor tiles. And then the second shot or the second injection process actually puts the traction squares that are made of TPE into the tile so you don't slip when you're walking on it. You're infusing two things into one. Two things into one. Like an Oreo cookie? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you even have it coming through the back so you've got... So we've got traction on the floor and traction on your shoes. Well, I notice you've got the same sort of hopper and screw ram device on this side, but when I look up top, I've got another one coming from the other side, you know, somewhat offset at an angle, and I assume that's the two different materials entering the machinery? Yes, that does one material, the other side does another material, so you can change colors. That's why we have so many different color combinations on these tech floor floor tiles. You've got changing temperatures as the dyes you know, heat up and cool down. As you mentioned, you've got water cooling, but there's other variables in manufacturing, so is there kind of a constant loop of checking parts and then making sure the machines are set up properly? And One of our quality control ladies, Kayla, was just checking our parts as they came out of the machine, and she checks it on a regular basis, and she checks them as they come out of the machine and writes down the size on the part, and then she takes them to our quality control lab, waits a half hour after they've completely cooled, and measures it again to make sure 
that the part is exactly the correct size so that our customer gets the perfect part every time with every order. Very cool. So that's pretty much the injection molding processes and on the back side I know we've got some of the thermal forming. We've got a great thermal forming department. Come on over, we'll show you that. Cool. So have you ever bought brake pads and actually wondered what you're getting? Well, Wagner and Federated have teamed up to make sure you get the right pad for your vehicle and the right material for your driving needs. So let's take a look at them. They have them in European, domestic, Asian, and fleet and police. Now, if you break down and look at each one of them, you'll notice significant differences in each of the pads and the friction material. All right, let's look at the European pad. Now, Wagner has done something pretty cool. On a European pad, they meet or exceed the R90 requirements. You'll see it on the backing plate right here, R90. Now, R90 was just legislation introduced in 1999 that said the brake pads have to meet a specific friction material or formulation or it can't be sold in Europe because a lot of European cars have a single caliper piston. Now, this design difference makes for higher friction contents in the pads itself on European models versus its Asian American counterparts. All right, now let's look at the police fleet line. Now these are made basically for extreme braking conditions, be it a taxi cab, police car, an ambulance, or your truck that tows a car hauler, a boat, or a toy trailer, or something like that. Heavy duty friction material. And the one thing you're gonna find common in all the Wagner SST pads is they meet or exceed OEM standards. And that means with chamfers, slots, shims, wear sensors where applicable, and so forth. The whole line of Wagner SST pads available at Federated Auto Parts and Federated Car Care Center. This segment is brought to you by MagnaFlow Exhaust Products. Quality, power, sound. Hey, welcome back. We're just south of Chicago at WeatherTech with David McNeil, and he's shown us a really high-tech manufacturing facility where they make all kinds of accessories for your ride. Now, we've been checking out the plastic injection molding, and. If I'm looking at this sheet, I'm thinking, you're not just injection molding big squares, are you? No, this is not injection molding at all. This is a different type of manufacturing. It's called thermoforming. And basically, we take a sheet of plastic, put it in the oven, heat it up, and then when it comes out, we put it over a tool, and we suck the plastic down into the tool, and that's thermoforming. And right now, we're making cargo or trunk liners for cars on this machine. So you can get pretty deep draws and you can get, like I know one of your you know, specialties in your liners is they come up the sides so you can contain all that mud and dirt. Yes, we make the floor liners that protect the front, the back, and even up the sides. And it's basically the same process. Now I've seen you know, vacuum forming, thermal forming, and injection molding before. So those aren't necessarily the technology enablers to do things in America. So how do you put it together so that you can actually make the product right here versus going overseas? There's a couple of things, uh, in my opinion, that are required to have to be competitive globally. One is the great American worker. Absolutely. And the second is American technology. As a matter of fact, every machine in this room is made right here in America. Wow. So we're putting American workers to work, building the machinery, and actually manufacturing parts on those machines. Even the plastic is made in America. So is it really that simple? You got American technology and American people, and it just, boom, it all came together, and here you are? Or was there some progression? Well, I started the business in 1989, and it's grown steadily ever since. Why? Because we deliver a product that the consumer likes. If they didn't like what we have, or are selling them, or what they're buying, it would be over instantly. So we really sweat the details on making the parts, the floor liners, the cargo liners, mud flaps, side window deflectors, whatever it is, we really sweat the details on how they fit to make sure the consumer, our customer, gets exactly what they expect. Well, I noticed even things like the little clips that get put into the floor mats, there's a machine over there doing that. And even, even the hangers that you guys hang the product on the shelf, there was a machine making the hanger and there was another cool machine just printing the Planning labels them, on right. it. Like, You've brought everything in-house to like a 10 level on the scale. Well, it's called vertical integration, and we try to do almost everything we can in-house within reason. Huh. So you got a great environment, 
you're continually progressing, you're putting all the right combinations together. I'm really digging it. Thanks. Well, we've got a little more technology over at our tool shop. All right, well, that sounds like an invite, so why don't we head over there? Head over there. Hey, welcome back. Now we're at WeatherTech just outside of Chicago. You saw the manufacturing plant where they do the injection molding, the thermal forming, all the really neat high-tech manufacturing parts. That's where they're made, but somewhere it's got to start. And this is where it starts. The process of making one of our floor liners is pretty complex. First, we select the vehicle. Then we laser scan the floor of the vehicle. Then we build the part to fit that exact floor. But there's still another step in the process, and that is building a stereo lithography part. And that is like one of these parts. And we generate that on one of these machines that has a laser hitting a UV sensitive plastic resin, and it creates the part, a three dimensional part. And we put the floor liner in the vehicle, and then we'll make any notes or changes to the SLA part. For instance, this one, we want to put this floor mat retention position two millimeters farther forward. So that's notated here. So then we'll make another SLA to test fit it again. Once it's signed off, then we go to tooling. Each one of these parts fits completely differently. Each one is for a different vehicle and it's actually a custom fit. Well, that's the thing that's always stood out about the WeatherTech. When you put them in, it's like they were tailored. It's like a fitted suit. Nothing gets in the way of your feet. All the dirt's trapped in the right spots. I mean, it really, does. really cool. <laughs> the details that you guys put into them. No, it's, 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 you sweat the details for the consumer and that's why our floor liners are the best floor, floor liners on the market. All right, so once you've got this marked up, what's the next step? Once we've signed off on it that it fits perfectly, then we head out to the tool room and actually make the tooling. Lead the way. This is our machine shop and we have 26 CNC, that's computerized numerical control machines. Three axis, four axis, and five axis. The five axis machines you typically find only in aerospace. We have them so we make really good tools so that our customers get great parts. So you don't farm that out, you just keep it all in house so you can do quality control, you can do the designs that you want, the turnaround times. We want to get things done when we want them done so we try to do it ourselves with American made machinery and American workers. Nice. This guy's been on here for a few hours. This is just the next floor mat kind of tooling. This is an over the hump floor liner tool being made. It's water cooled and it'll run for the next couple days. Let me stop it for a second. And you can see it's just starting to take that shape of the hump. Now, I've seen the small size, the medium size looks really cool. I saw that big tool you have in the background. You guys have amazing manufacturing capabilities to go then manufacture stuff, which is kind of neat. Now we're running out of time here. We're gonna go back to the shop, check on Willie. In the meantime, you guys had some big races and some big wins here recently. Well, we won the 36 hours of Florida this year, the 24 hours of Daytona and the 12 hours of Sebring just this past weekend. That is awesome stuff. So while you guys go back to the shop, Dave and I have some bench racing to do, so we'll see you. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. Kev, man, it had to be pretty cool for you to... Hey, Kev. What? Uh, what? Hey, man, it had to be pretty cool for you to see all that WeatherTech stuff actually oh, being yeah, made, dude. man, at the factory. Oh, the way they just pull that thing down and form the shape. Yeah, man. It's always neat to see how things are really made, especially right here in the States. Loving you know? that, right? Well, speaking of cool, this is from SAS Safety Court. This is the digital earmuffs. Yeah, I can tell. They work pretty good, right? Yeah. To drown out any sort of hammering, grinding you got going on, it comes with an input jack cord, so you can use it for your MP3 or your iPod. Yeah, so it's not just drowning out those big banging noises. It's rocking the tunes right in your head. It has a volume limiter, too, because there's 
SAS safety. We'll keep your ears safe. 82 decibels it will roll up to, yep. and then it cuts it off right there. Keep your ears nice and safe. All digital music while muffling out the sounds you don't want to hear, like maybe a significant other. I don't know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, there you go. Earmuffs, digital earmuffs from SAS Safety Corp. All right, now here's a product we absolutely love from Workshop Hero. It's a metal rescue rust remover bath, and man, this stuff is awesome. Yeah, you know why? Because you don't have to do hardly anything. Yeah. You pour it in a bucket, yeah. and you take your rusty part, and you set it in there, and you let it soak. The immersion can last from five minutes, if it's not rusty at all, to 24 hours, if it's something that's really coated in rust and pitted. And the great thing is, whether it's wiring, plastic, gauges, or metal, it's safe on everything except for rust. Check them out. It's the Metal Rescue Rust Remover Bath from the Workshop Hero Guys. All right, next up from Rizlone, it's the Fuel System Treatment. Yeah, we have it for gasoline applications and for diesel applications. And in those diesel applications, it's going to help prevent that fuel from gelling, which is common in those winter months. Yeah. It's also going to add some lubricity, real important for not just the injectors, but the fuel pumps as well. Yeah, for gasoline, it's going to do similar things, right? You've got to lubricate your pump, your injectors. You've got to keep the system clean. So it's a good way to keep your whole top end, you know, tip top and ready to go. It's Rizlone's gasoline and diesel fuel system treatment. All right, guys, check out this cool little unit. This is a CR Spilus. It's the DIC20. Yeah, it's a deionizer. Now, what that means is it basically grabs all those minerals and nasty things that are going to leave deposits when you're rinsing your car. I'm on well water, man, Ooh. so you know how bad yeah. that is. So all I do is I wash it with soap and water, plug this little guy in, rinse it with this, whoop, 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 and it's crystal clear, man. Yeah. It's awesome. This goes right in line with your garden hose. It's great for cars. You don't have to dry them. You walk away. Yeah. No scratches trying to towel them out or using the chamois. Right. And this, this little guy right here will actually tell you when you have to change these cartridges. Yeah, and it's not just great for cars. Windows, you yeah. got a two-story house or more. <laughs> Once you're done cleaning them, you're not trying to move the ladder and squeegee them. Rinse them off with this guy. It's the CR Spotless. It's the DIC20. Makes your job easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 